Welcome back to D-Lab. This is part two of the Dynakit ST70 amplifier build. I'm still managing the Troys, but in this video, we are going to be mechanically assembling the amplifier. So there's no wiring at this point. I'm going to follow the manual and we're going to build this as it would have been built back in the 70s. So I'll take a look at the steps and we'll accomplish those tasks on the chassis. And when we're done, we'll have everything ready to wire. All right, here it is, the mechanical assembly of the ST70. First step is to mount the seven octal sockets on the chassis. You refer to this pictorial diagram to get the keyways in the right position on the sockets. We'll also follow this for all the other hardware which is mounted as we accomplish each step. All right, I have four of the sockets in place. One thing to note, the pictorial is from the bottom view. So this is the front panel as it would be folded up looking at you. And you can see your keyways. And then of course we have V3 and V6, which I've installed. One thing I wanted to point out, these are the old cinch bottom mount tube sockets. Super nice. All right, I have these seven octal sockets installed. Next step, we're going to be installing the RCA input jacks and the stereo manual slide switch, and that will wrap up the front panel. All right, front panel is complete. Next, I'm going to mount the two 10K bias adjustment pots and the four position speaker terminals on the back of the amplifier. Well there's our speaker jacks installed. I also mounted up the 10k pots. I added some fine washers underneath so that when the nut spins it does not scrape the chassis. The next step they want me to put in a long screw here to mount the selenium rectifier. I'm not going to be using this. We're going to install a 1N4007 diode instead. The next three steps going to install the power switch, rubber grommet for the line cord, and the fuse holder. Well, here we go. We're going to install the first transformer. This is the main power transformer. Just have to be careful not to pinch any leads. And she drops right into place. Some lock washers here and the nuts. It's starting to look like an amp. So, if you haven't purchased a nut driver set, I would highly recommend that you do, especially when you're trying to get to hardware that is in these little tight areas. So this set is made by X-Lite. I've had it for at least 30 years as replaceable blades. Back when I bought the kit, it was about $50. I'd hate to see what they are now. All right, now I'm gonna mount the choke and the seven position terminal strip. While I was getting ready to mount this terminal strip and I noticed that this hole is way too large for a 440 screw. So that one accidentally got drilled out too large. So I'm going to replace both of these with number six screws and a lock nut. So next we're going to mount the Dynaco output transformers. So you can see the hardware here for the terminal strip and the hardware here for the choke, which is underneath of the transformer. The other thing to note is you do not see Dynaco using rubber grommets in the feed through holes for the leads, but they're large enough and there's no burrs. So there's no chance of nicking those wires. Another thing to point out, these transformers can only mount in one direction. These are your speaker leads and you can see they're nice and short and it goes to the terminals. And then this is the primary side. 
I made a little observation about the transformer wiring I wanted to point out. Normally when I work on these ST70s, it's that old cloth wire coming out of these transformers. It's usually pretty stiff from age. You can see that this is the modern style wire that you'd see on transformers today. So this is definitely a mid-70s amplifier. Okay, the last step is to mount the four-section filter capacitor. As I said, we're not going to use the old original because of its age. We're going to install this nice new Authenticap. But I'm going to do something a little bit different on this installation. Dynaco says to simply put the cap in, twist the leads, and then they mount and lug for the ground connection. I am going to solder my cap direct to the chassis because I've got a special tool for that. To prepare the chassis for soldering, you have to remove some of this chrome plating. So I take a Dremel tool with a grinding bit and I'm going to grind off the chrome until I see the metal underneath. And what is that special tool? You guessed it! Snozoramus! Sit back, relax. So soldering these filter caps in place is not only good for a better bond to the chassis, but it also eliminates wobble of the filter cap and possibly causing vibration when you're playing your big classic stereo system. So I solder two of these tabs and the other two will be used for ground connections. Well there's filter cap soldered in place. Last step from the mechanical assembly is to mount the circuit board. We'll get that in and then we'll take a look topside. Mechanical assembly is complete on the Dynakit model ST70. Next step, get her wired up. Alright, D-Lab is taking a mission complete on the assembly of the Dynakit ST70. Next, we wire it. And that'll be in part three. See you then.